Hello and welcome. In this video, I am going to show you the finished part of the product page and I'm going to explain what I did and how else you can customize it. So uh, behind the scene, I did a little bit of customization for the product page. So to make it a little bit like better, I know it is not the most perfect product page you would ever seen, like the project, pr the product listing, but you can make your, your page a lot better. So this is what I did in half an hour. Just a little bit of title, maybe some description behind it. And for the drawing, I downloaded this one from Andro. If you do know about Andro, it is a great source. Uh, you can search for andro.co. It is a great source for downloading the SVGs. Of course, I'm not sponsoring them, but still it is worth mentioning that they have a lot of free SVGs you can use in your project to make your website look more beautiful. This is the product page. It is showing the product which is in the wish list. Currently, this is the only one, so I remove one of them. If I go to the front store and add another one, let's see if this is working. Also, I have to be logging and you know, without logging, it is not going to work. I am not a robot. Send it. Oops, it was too quick. Submit it again. Ah, oh, incorrect email and password. So what I will do is I will just create another account to make sure everything is working fine on different account also. So this is going to be user and the last name is name and then user me.com. It is not very really important to create like the actual account, but it is just fine. Now I will create the account. Cool. I'll go to the catalog. Now I will add this product to the wish list. Never save it. So if I add it to the wish list, now coming to my app here, I will just refresh the page. Here you go. Both of them are in the wish list. Now what else information I have here? I'm going to show you the source code now. Also, I'm showing the inventory quantity here. Currently, this product has zero in, in, in inventory. And like I think if someone in the shop owner want to see who added a product to the wish list, they might be interested to know how many we have in inventory because if the inventory is zero, zero, obviously they will add some to the inventory to make people like, okay, you want, you have it in the wish list, so you might buy it. So those are the important information. If you give it to the user, it is very helpful. Also in the dashboard, these are completely hard coded. You can make it like dynamic for your app. But the important part for ours is the billing. Before I jump to the billing part, let me show you what I did behind the scene here. So I will drag the editor here. Now this is the table, basic design. I went through the, the product body and I display all of those information. What I did behind the scene is if I check out this function, which is the index, I added some extra data here. For example, I need the feature image and the source of it from the GraphQL we learned in the previous video, the total inventory. If you don't know how this is going to work, make sure you run it and your GraphQL app that we mentioned in the earlier video, like GraphQL app here. So make sure you test it and then put it in the code here. So if I test all of this now, okay, access API. I think this one is not the one we want. This one is the one we want. It is adding like if you press space here, control space is going to open the IntelliSense and tell you which uh, properties are available. I talked about this one in the previous video. We need the vendor. Vendor is like which branch of the store you want. So I am displaying vendor under the product title. It is something I thought it might look good to display it here, but it is up to you to customize your product page. That's it for this video. I hope it has been informative and in the next video, we'll focus on billing. How will you charge your customer when they install the app? And what are the different types of charging? Like how would you go with the trial version and how would you charge people and let's say freemium and how would you charge a dev store? And all of those things we will focus in the next video. I hope it has been informative. I will see you in the next video.